Hello, everyone. I am here with Senate candidate for 2020, Stephen Cox. He's running in Kentucky against someone who you may or may not have heard of. Uh, his name is Mitch McConnell, and he is one of the worst politicians, if not the worst, in the country doing just irreparable damage. And he is here to tell you why he's the best to go up against Mitch McConnell. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the program, Stephen. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about this primary because there's a number of people currently running. I know there are still some candidates that are jumping in the race, but a lot of people thus far, they're more familiar, I think, with Amy McGrath, who is someone who I believe was recommended by Chuck Schumer to run. And we got a little bit of a snippet of, you know, what she's going to do to defeat Mitch McConnell. And I'm going to play that clip for everyone uh, very briefly so they can get a, a taste as to why she has a very horrible strategy. You know, Kentucky voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. Yeah. And you can say Kentucky is a very red state, but it's a very pro-Trump state. And if you, if you think about why Kentuckians voted for Trump, they wanted to drain the swamp. And Trump said that he was going to do that. Trump promised to bring back jobs. Um, he promised to lower drug prices for so many Kentuckians. And that is very important. And you know what? Who stops them along the way? Who stops uh, the president from doing these things? Well, Mitch McConnell. And I think that that's really important. And that's going to be you know, my message, that the things that Kentuckians voted for Trump for are not being done. He's not able to get it done because of Senator McConnell. Essentially, what she's saying is, I'm going to run a pro-Trump campaign. Um, I'm going to be a pro-Trump Democrat. The problem with this strategy is, first of all, um, if you run as Republican light, nine times out of ten, voters are going to opt for the real deal. And second of all, all that it would take for this type of campaign to implode is Donald Trump to say four words. I endorse Mitch McConnell. So, Stephen, what are you going to do to defeat Mitch McConnell? Because I don't think anybody is under the illusion that this is going to be an easy process. But what is your strategy? Because I think it's clear that nobody has faith that Amy McGrath is going to be able to pull this off. Well, I mean, honestly, my strategy is uh, one... I'm a working class person. I know a lot of people around the state and a lot of people around the state know me just as a, you know, a regular person. And um, I'm being very unapologetic, very genuine in everything that I do. Um, if my stances aren't popular, I'm still rolling with them. I've, I've made some people mad, but, um, you know, I, there's a reason I take the stances I do. It's because I believe in them and, you know, uh, you know, with with Amy especially, you know, you'll see her flip flop on some things, uh, just given public opinion. But that is um, that's part of the strategy I'm going to take to Mitch McConnell. Um, he, he's not real well liked by anybody, by any means. Um, but what happens time and time again is the people that run against him try the Republican light way, and um, you know. Voters don't turn out for that. I mean, there are actual progressive people everywhere in Kentucky. Kentucky used to be heavily, you know, a blue state. But over the last, you know, 30 years, it slowly went more red and red and red because, you know, their first reaction is, oh, the Republican one. That means I should be more like the Republican. No, it means you need to get out there, be honest, genuine, inspire people, you know, and, and stick to your guns. You are running... On a very progressive platform, you support Medicare for all, free college, you essentially check all of the progressive boxes, so to speak. But what it seems like you're kind of implementing is a, a, um, a Stacey Abrams type of strategy, which she did in Georgia, where rather than trying to run to the right, you just have a massive get out the vote campaign. Like you get people in Kentucky who are non-voters and you get them to come out and vote. Is that the type of strategy that you're trying to carry out here? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you saw it in the 2016 elections, um, you know, with, with the presidential election. Uh, you know, Hillary, you know, she won the popular vote, but still that wasn't enough to, you know, clinch it because electoral college. And it's because people weren't inspired to vote for her. Um, I mean, I voted for her just because I felt like I'm definitely not voting for Donald Trump. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it's it's awful that you know we have to make that sort of decision like i don't really like this candidate but it's the best chance we have of not having that candidate 
you know, we should really have good candidates with actual ideas that will help people. Yeah, and part of the problem is that you have so many people who I think are misguided who run for office and they try to replicate the strategy that Republicans have been utilizing. Like, you know, the same problem back in 2014 with Alison Lundergan Grimes. You know, she was criticizing Mitch McConnell for not being right wing enough. You know, she was saying, Mitch, that's not how you hold a gun. And I have, you know, used her ads as an example of how you don't run a campaign. Because here's the thing. If you give voters an option between someone who is a Republican and someone who is saying, no, I'm the real Republican, they're not going to believe that. Like, they're not going to buy that you're more conservative when you have a D next to your name, like for these voters, I don't think you can win them over. Like I, and you can kind of give me your thoughts on this, like this strategy, this idea that we need to win over Trump voters. I don't think that is a strategy that will be conducive to win. I mean, sure, you can maybe get back some of the voters that were previously pro Obama, but then flipped and went to Trump. But I mean, I think that the problem with the Democratic Party and where they've gone wrong is that they listen to strategists, they listen to these people who say, no, you, you, this is a red state, so you have to be a moderate, you have to be relatively conservative. But what do you say to those people who say, Stephen, you know, you're running against Mitch McConnell, this is going to be a bloodbath if you are going to go to the far left, which we know that they will call you in the event you win the primary. I mean, how do you respond to that? Because I think this type of criticism is absolutely inevitable, but you have the right strategy, and this strategy has led to progressive victories and Democrat victories. So how do you respond to that if they bring you on for an interview you just win the primary and they say okay so mitch mcconnell is going to win i mean what would you tell them because i think that even though we have the right argument that is backed by empirical evidence um people don't believe it because it seems counterintuitive and i think that i can get that just instinctively but how would you explain this to people well i mean honestly if i were to um i mean they're gonna they're they're gonna call me far left they're gonna call me a socialist i mean that's kind of his key word right now is, you know, fight socialism. But, um, you know, if I ran to the right and tried to appeal to those people, they're still going to call me a socialist and it's just going to, you know, alienate my actual audience of people that believe in me and, you know, and want to move forward with these ideas. Or I can, you know, stick to those ideas, stick to my base and just grow it. And, um, you know, the truth is, even if they don't like my ideas, I guarantee they'll like somebody being honest with them for a change. And if that gets some of those voters over, that's great. But that's not who I'm trying to get out to vote. I can't guarantee. I mean, I can't. I can't. Um, you know, expect them to win this for me. I've got to get the people that are tired of everything we've got and uh, think that if they vote for Amy, it's just going to be like voting for McConnell anyway. We need to get rid of those um, sort of doubts. Get people out to vote. Organize them. Say, hey, you know, Stephen Cox. May 19th, 2020. Get out there. We need you, you know. So talk about Mitch McConnell, because you said that he's not very popular in Kentucky and, you know, more than anyone else. Um, and part of like there's there is this issue where politicians are not very popular, but they keep winning. But name recognition is such a powerful thing. So can you explain what people's grievances are with Mitch McConnell? Because I could name like a thousand but what are people in Kentucky saying about Mitch McConnell? Why are they dissatisfied with him? Well, you know, that's the interesting thing. Some people don't really know exactly why they're dissatisfied. They just know that he's a bad person. Um, and then you, you talk to actual people around the, the state, and they have interesting things that aren't always to do with policy. I, uh, you know, I work for a uh, retail drug chain, and I was talking to some of my you know, peers in Paducah, and they said, oh, yeah, you know, I, 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 he came into my store one time and he was just absolutely rude. He was a sniveling little, you know, da, da, da. And, you know, <laughs> and you're like, OK, so it's not just policy. It's the way he acts. People dislike him. Um, they can see through a lot of the facade of how he panders. And not everybody does because some people, they, you know, eat up the pandering. But, I mean, he hasn't done anything. He votes to cut Medicare. He votes to cut healthcare in general i mean the whole reason that we have a need for campaign finance reform is because he engineered our current system of campaign finance so that super PACs can just you know throw everything out so talk a little bit about that because i i wanted to ask you i feel like one thing that 
it's incredibly popular is when you talk about corruption and Mitch McConnell is the corruption king. So I feel like that's one way that you can absolutely hit him if you're running against him. Not this, oh, well, he's not helping Trump carry out his agenda nonsense. Mitch McConnell is as corrupt as they come. So talk a little bit about that. Have you heard anyone in Kentucky express concerns with corruption, with his wife in Trump's administration being overtly corrupt, yeah. with the yeah. conflicts of interest? Well, I mean, not just that, but you look at his net worth, um, it basically jumped from $2 million to $28 million, uh, in a matter of like six years. So, you know, what's that about? Obviously, it's not because of his pay, because his pay is $175,000 a year, and it doesn't add up. Um, also, you know, his family, or well, you know, his wife, Elaine Chow, her family, they own a large shipping business three times in the past six years, three times. You can You can Google it. They keep getting busted because their boats are being used to smuggle cocaine in, into the U.S. I mean, that's where you hear the whole, you know, cocaine Mitch thing. It's like, <laughs> why why does anybody, you know, put up with him, you know, being there as that? Uh, you know, scarier things that are happening. He's uh, bringing in, a, you know, an aluminum factory to Kentucky. So that, that'll bring jobs, but it's heavily funded by a Russian oligarch. Um so yeah, it's kind of a deal with the devil. Um, not to mention, you know, he's not pushing forward with any of the uh, the voter protection laws that they're pushing into Congress because he owns the vested interest in the companies that create the voting machines, which is, is kind of a, a scary thing, you know, even for me looking forward, like, okay, is he just going to, you know, hack the vote if it doesn't go his way? I don't know. But, I mean, he might have that ability because – he owns part of the machines. <laughs> well, it's just a matter of why wouldn't you want um, election security? Because you can't have a democracy function properly if people don't have faith in democracy. And there, like what you're speaking to really is a microcosm of, you know, broader issues. There's a conflict of interest everywhere when it comes to Mitch McConnell. He's so corrupt that it's just brazen and it's shameless. So I don't know why the people of Kentucky continue to tolerate this. And it seems like there hasn't really been someone who wants to run against Mitch that calls it like it is uh, until now with you. So let you're going to, you know, if you win the primary, you will be going up against Mitch. And that's when you can hammer him for the corruption, for everything that he's doing. But you're in a primary currently, so you've got to win the primary in order to take on Mitch McConnell. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamics of this primary? I know that you have at least two other primary opponents, but talk about the people who you're running against and how you're different from them. Well, um, there is a Mike. I can't really think of his last name. You know, he's got the no labels uh, ad going around right now. I'm different from him because I'm actually from Kentucky. Um People don't realize, but he uses the label. He, t he talks about no labels, but he uses the label of Kentucky Farmer. He's a journalist from Wisconsin. He moved here in 2006. I'm, I'm glad he, he likes this place and, you know, he wanted to move here. But, you know, when you call yourself a Kentucky farmer, that makes it sound like, you know, you've got roots here. And he's not a Kentucky farmer. He's a guy who farms in Kentucky. <laughs> um, as far as, you know, Amy McGrath, she's the, you know, best known person. Um I know I'd like to think that her heart's in the right place, but she's either pandering to try to get votes with her strategy, and you know that that just means that she's lying, or she actually does want to support Trump, which is you know scarier um, anyway. Because how can you be a, a Democrat that wants to support the leader of the Republican Party? You might as well be a Republican. Yeah, and when I saw that, I thought, man, if I were in Kentucky. To hear a Democrat basically promote themselves as pro-Trump, it's nauseating. You know, it, yeah. it's just unacceptable. Yeah. And and I, I agree with you. I don't think that, like, she's a bad person. I think her heart is in the right place. I think she is doing what she thinks will make her electorally, you know, uh, successful. 
but it, it's a, it's a disaster. Like it's we're watching a train wreck in real time. And of course, if she defeated Mitch McConnell in the event she won the primary, I would be thrilled. I would vote for you know a ham sandwich over Mitch McConnell. Anyone is better than Mitch McConnell, you know. So it, I would be excited with anyone defeating him. But we have to get someone who knows what to do. A get out the vote campaign where you energize the left in Kentucky. And nobody has said that they want to do that except for you. So let me give you one last pitch. The website is coxforus.com. If you want to make this happen, if you want to try to take on a political behemoth, then you have to support someone who knows how to do that. And I think it's uh, Stephen Cox. So make your last pitch and just share anything that you think my viewers should know. Um, well, they should know that I am pro-choice. Um, there was a little bit of a debacle with that just because um, originally I'd taken a stance of saying that I was pro-life, but I believed in the Constitution, which gave people the choice. But really, um, you know, I talked to several women about that, and they let me know, well, it's okay to not be for abortion, but as long as you believe that it's people's choice, then that means you're pro-choice. So, yeah, absolutely, 100 percent pro-choice. That's a good clarification. Also, not taking any uh, donations from corporations, special interest groups, nothing like that. It's 100 percent by the people for the people. Um, I'm not going to be bought and sold because the only thing I want is progress. That's that's excellent. N now, let me ask you, because you, you touched on the pro-choice thing. Let's say I'm a Republican voter in Kentucky and I say, Stephen, life is absolutely precious. How can you say that you're personally pro-life but support somebody's right to end what they deem life? Like, what, how would you respond to that? I mean, I honestly, I do believe that all life is precious. And with that, I believe that free will is something equally as precious. Um, you know, people, a lot of times when you say you're pro-choice, they want to act like that you're not uh, going to be a religious person. I am a Christian. I believe that, you know, God gave us free will. And with that, it, free will was supported by the Constitution. It is no one's place to choose a person's path but their own. And people really need to grab onto that. They need to stop using God as a crutch to try to shove their ideas in people's face because that's that is not God. But then there's the rebuttal. We ban murder. It's not legal to murder someone. So the way that I think, you know, the thing about that, um, a lot of people when they say, you know, when they talk about the Bible and I, I know this is the humanist report, but I'll, I'll give you a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit Go of ahead. Uh, hit me old uh, Old Testament knowledge. Um, if you look into Old Testament knowledge and you look into what the punishments were for what it was an eye for an eye. I mean, if you murdered somebody, you would be murdered. If you caused a loss of life, you would lose your life. If you caused a loss of property, you would have to lose part of your property or make amends. Um, in the case of um, miscarriages or abortions, that was counted as property loss. Religiously, I mean, I don't believe that life starts at the first breath because – you know, I, I know how brains develop. I understand science. Right. But religiously, that was the, the law, you know. And this is such and a wedge that, issue. It's going to come up. Like, I, I have a feeling that this will be something, okay. especially in Kentucky, where this will come up. This, look, this is my advice to you. This is what I would say if I were in your position. I am unapologetically pro-life in every sense of the word, but that means I support choice. And the reason why is because regardless if we have abortion, abortions that are legal or illegal, abortions will continue to happen. It's just Absolutely. a matter of if we make it illegal, then this will lead to, you know, unsafe abortions. And that means that women are going to die. So I'm pro-life, but... That means I protect women's lives. And also, I'm pro-life in the sense that I don't support wars like Mitch McConnell. He supports every single war, and he doesn't care that there are women and children being bombed in Yemen by Saudi Arabia, and they're using our bombs. So I think that when you really... If you broaden what it means to be pro-life and explain why that leads to you being pro-choice, I found... Like, you're not going to convince 100% of people, but I think that it's a really... It's logically soundproof, I think, and people can't question it. But what I think your best I mean, honestly, hope is to, to get them to understand. Yeah, if you, if you honestly support life and you believe that life is precious, you're going to arrive at pro-choice. It's, it's just exactly. the natural outcome um, because what they consider pro-life has nothing to do with actually caring about life. 
at all. I mean, it's, it's pro birth, but I mean, once a person's born, you want to say that, you know, taking care of them is entitlements and, you know, unnecessary benefits Yeah. or, Hey, you know, you want to support what ICE is doing at the border. Is, is, is that pro life? No, they're treating those people like animals. Exactly. And honestly, I guarantee that a lot of these people have animals as pets that they treat better than we're treating the people at the border. Yeah, which is sad, which is super sad. Yeah. And bodily autonomy is a human right. So look, you you know, the campaign just started. So you have a lot of time to kind of like listen to feedback and what types of questions will come up. And it seems like the abortion one has come up. So, you know, it, it, I'm glad that you still have a lot of time. And it looks like, you know, you have the right approach in terms of getting out the vote. And that's really what I wanted to hear. Like, I, I never want to hear someone who's, you know, a progressive running in a red state say, look, I'm just going to I'm going to shift to the right in order to win votes from Republicans, because it's it's not a strategy no, that work. will ever work. I mean, it's going to work sometimes. Right. I mean, Joe Manchin did it. But I, I mean, most of the time, if you want to Does win anybody like Joe Manchin, nobody like everybody hates Joe Manchin. Nobody likes, Joe Manchin. nobody likes him. So you <laughs> activate your base. So thank you for understanding that. Yeah. So uh, it's Cox for us.com. If you want to support him, um, tell us what we can do. Well, yeah, um, definitely Cox for us.com. Go there. You can sign up to be a volunteer. It's got a link, a donation link. That is a secure link to act blue. Um, you can follow me at Stephen Cox USA on Twitter. You can also go to facebook.com slash Cox for KY. That's C O X F O R K Y. Um, connect with me there. If you want to actually help um, and, and, you know, do things, I have all my contact information completely public. If I get elected to the Senate, it'll still be public. I'll be here for the people. And, you know, if you want to help me, just reach out to me. I'll talk to you just like we're talking right now. And when's the primary? Primary May. 19th 2020 so you've got plenty of time to take action if you're in kentucky um and certainly if you don't live in kentucky i'm sure that you will have phone bank uh phone banking established for people outside of the state correct absolutely absolutely there's actually been a lot of support come in to say hey you know we'll, we'll gladly make phone calls for you okay well we're gonna get this set up that's great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program, Stephen. We'll be following your campaign and, you know, we, we wish you luck because so far it seems like uh, nobody else has the right strategy. And I think that you um, you have the right ideas. And um, let's just hope that we can take down Mitch McConnell because that would be um, that would be pretty great for the country, <laughs> to say the least, especially great for Kentucky. One way or another, he's done. He's done. Yeah, yeah. Bad person, horrible politics. Uh, let's get him out. Stephen Cox, thank you so much for coming on the program.